Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our uh, dear uh, sister who gave us this translation. Indeed, strange things, they do happen in this world. The translation of the message that she sent to me, it reads like this. Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story as anonymous? I want to confess to you all the things that I did. You can call me Spoo, even though that is not my name. I am a man that is 38 years old. Currently, I am HIV positive because of some of the things that I do. Because my rituals, it involves sleeping with a lot of women. Unfortunately, I am not allowed to condomize. Otherwise, the ritual will not be complete. So each and every time when I sleep with a woman, I make sure that I do not condomize. As you know that when you do not condomize, the more that you sleep with women, then the risk of you catching an infection, it is very high. Currently, maybe if I can just guess, maybe I have slept with close to 100 women since that time when I started doing these Ukutwala rituals. I grew up in KwaZulu Natal, then I later moved on to Johannesburg. I grew up in a very small rural village where life was quiet, but it was hard at the same time. My parents, they were amongst the poorest in their family. As for my father, he left and he left for the city and he never came back again. We just said that my father got married to another woman and started another family. We did not have anything, but still we had high hopes because my mom was quite a prayerful woman and that was enough for a long time. My mother raised me on her own and when I was young, she worked hard to put food on the table even though we struggled. She always taught me to be an honest man and to work hard and to trust in God and to promise her never to hurt women in my entire life. And it hurts me because I know that I am doing what my mom asked me not to do to hurt women and I have been doing it more than a hundred times. But life is a way of testing you, does not, doesn't it? By the time I was in my 20s, I had dreams of making something out of myself. And I was someone who used to love to make quick cash, like play your lotto and things like that. And I had dreams of lifting my family out of poverty. The job opportun opportunities, they were scarce in my village. And I knew that I had to leave home to find a better life. That was when I moved to Johannesburg and I thought that I was going to find work and to send money back home. So I came with one of my friends and we started staying at this other hostel. For a while at least it was fine. He spoke with his boss even though I had not gone for training. I then got a job as a security and I started going for the training and I got my certificate. This was after I had already started working as a security guard. Even though the pay was not much but at least I had my first salary but I felt like I was moving forward with my life. I was dating a very beautiful girl and life was now okay. Weekend at least I would have some money to go out and spend that money and I used to send my money and I used to send even my mom some money. But as time went on, I started to see people around me. Most of them, they were living a life that I could not touch. Men that I knew who were people, sometimes they used to be people who had nothing just like me. Suddenly, they had beautiful cars, beautiful houses, and going out with very beautiful women on their arms. I would ask them how they did it, but they would just smile and say, you will see one day, buddy, there is a way for people like us to make it in life. I did not understand what they meant, but I wanted what they had. Desperation does things to you. It can make you blind to the warning signs. One night, that was when I met a man that was named Mandla. This was after one of my friends had told me that it is a good thing as a poor man to go and hang out in popular spots where the rich will be hanging out. Just go there, dress nicely, just save some money, buy a few expensive drinks and just sit and wait. And then you will start to have conversations with the rich. He was one of those who had made it big. I used to go to this other very quiet tavern. We were sitting in that tavern and I asked him straight up and I said, Manza, how did you go from being broke to living like a king? 
and Mandela looked at me for a very long time, then leaned in and whispered, and he said, do you really want to know? And I said, yes, bro, I am tired of struggling. I said, my voice cracked with desperation, and I hated how weak I sounded in that moment. Mandela's face grew serious, and he said, you know what, Swoo, it's not for everyone, Swoo. Ukutwala is very dangerous. Once you start, there is no going back. So he mentioned Ukutwala, I said, this is good. But Ukutwala, I had heard about it growing up. People said that it was a way of using some dark magic or short boys to get rich, but always you needed to pay something. I had always been told to stay far away by my mom from Sangomas, but in that moment I was willing to do anything so as to escape my life that was filled of poverty. Mandla explained what I needed to do. I had to meet with a Zangoma, and this was what my mom did not want me to do. This Zangoma would help me perform the ritual, but he said, Swo, listen carefully, Mandla said. Look, he looked at me dead in the eyes and he said, Once you do this, you can never go back. You will get money, yes, but you have to know that there are some things that you need to give to the spirits. I was so desperate and I did not care. All that I could think about was how my life would change, how my mother will not have to suffer anymore, what, does, what you do not know, it won't hurt you, how I could finally be the man that I always wanted to be. I'll send her a lot of money and she was not going to know that I was into this Ugutwala rituals. A week later, I stood in front of a darkened hut on the outskirts of this other village. The air in that room, it was full of smell of burning herbs and something that I could not even place. The Sangoma, an old woman, she looked at me and she waited for me and then she started speaking with one of the men who had gone with me to perform these rituals. She then looked at me and she said, you are here to sacrifice. She said in a low voice as I entered, I know that you are here for money. The spirits have already spoken. I was with you all this while. I nodded, my heart racing, and I said, yes, Gogo, I am ready. She took me through the process, explaining what would happen. I would have to make a blood sacrifice. Someone close to me, the spirits demanded it in exchange for wealth. At that moment, the weight of what I was about to do hit me. Who? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. The Sangoma then looked at me and she said, you already know who, the one who gave you life, your mother. I felt as if the world was spinning and spinning around and I said, no, go, go, I can't, not here, please. And then she said, if you want the riches that you seek, there is no other way. She said as she was looking at me, it is your choice, but understand this. When the spirit demand, they do not take no for an answer. And she said that for the fact that you you have stepped in my consultation room. You are part of this ritual now. I stood there, frozen. My mind was racing. Could I really do this? Could I sacrifice my own mother for money? But the desperation was too much. The thought of never getting out of this life was stronger than my love for my mother in that moment. I felt I left the heart that night numb and disconnected from the world around me. When I saw my mother a few days later, I could not even look her in the eyes. She smiled at me, happy that I was back home. I smiled back, but she did not know what I was planning. I was no longer her son, I was something else. The ritual was done a month later. The Sangoma prepared everything, and then the spirits took her. My mother, I don't remember much of that night, only after it was over. I felt empty inside, but as promised, the money came. At first, it was small amounts, but soon it grew. I bought a car, a house in the suburbs, and businesses. I had everything that I wanted, but something was always missing, and I felt really bad. Years passed, and I kept growing richer, but no peace. My nights, they are always filled with nightmares. That was when I visited that man and I said, you did not tell me that it is going to be like this. You did not tell me that each and every time when I hook up with a girl, I have to sleep with her, not using any protection. I am tired. I feel dirty. I can't even spend time alone. I am always high. I am always drinking alcohol because I am afraid to face my own conscience. That was when he said, I tried to warn you. It is sort of like not a 
blessing as such, but you will be cursed at the same time. You'll be having a lot of money. It is better than being poor. He laughed and he drove off. Please help me. Is there anyone who can assist me? I am even scared to go into any church building because whenever I try to think of going into any church building to just tell everyone my story, then I hear voices, but these voices, they'll be so distant as if they'll be telling me not to do what I would want to do to give my life to Christ. That is how cursed I have become. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear sister who gave us this translation. Strange things indeed they do happen in this world.